So you want to move within an HDRI. We'll start by rigging up this HDRI from Polyhaven. For this rig, we're going to need two spheres. The smaller one will be the default 100 centimeters, and I'll make the bigger one, let's say, 500 centimeters. Naming the smaller sphere HDRI and the larger sphere Render. Now we can't really see anything in here, so I'm going to do something that makes it easier to work, but doesn't affect rendering. First, we're going to add reverse normals to both the spheres, and then we're going to turn on backface culling in the display options. That way we can see what's going on inside the sphere without having to move the camera inside. But let's make some redshift materials. I'm going to bring in our HDRI, then pipe it into the redshift standard materials, transmission, color. That's the only channel we're going to need, so I'm going to remove diffuse and reflection, and then make sure that transmission is turned all the way on. Additionally, we're going to make one completely white diffuse material with reflection turned off. Make sure the HDRI has the HDRI material and the render material is white. Finally, let's make a new redshift point light, turn off decay, and that's pretty bright, so let's lower intensity to one. Uh, this is a simplified view of what we have. This null represents our light, this circle represents our HDRI sphere, and these arrows represent the rays coming from this light. As we move the light around, the rays adjust accordingly. To understand how this effect works, it helps us see the outer sphere and how the rays interact with that. As we move the light around, the rays travel through the HDRI and hit the outer render sphere. And if we render that out, it gives the impression of moving within the HDRI. Back in our rig, I'm going to make a camera and place it inside the inner sphere in order to see what's going on. If I start the IPR, you can see that it's really blown out. Despite setting decay to none, we're getting a lot of GI. By turning it off, we can see that we're properly projecting the HDRI onto our outer sphere. And by moving in the light, you can kind of see how this effect is going to work. But first I'm going to rotate the HDRI to line up with our axes. Now when I move the light along the x-axis, we're moving along this kind of road thing. Remember, this is just a light within this transmissive sphere, so always keep your light within the bounds of the HDRI sphere. For this demonstration, I'm going to only render 30 frames. I'm going to start here at... 70 centimeters and then by the end move it all the way to negative 70 centimeters. I'm going to quickly open up the timeline, change those to linear keyframes. And honestly, that's probably too close to the edge because we're getting extra distortion. So maybe we'll just do 50. So we've got this moving HDRI, but how do we get it out of this rig? We're going to bake the white outer sphere into an image sequence. So with the render sphere selected, we're going to go to redshift, tools, texture baking, Create bake set from selection. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to bake at 2K at a 1 by 2 ratio like most HDRIs, but depending on your final delivery, you might need to set this to 4K or 8K. Now it's important to remember that Redshift bake sets use your project's render settings to determine things like render location, format, and bit depth. So make sure to set those before you start your bake. Make sure your output location is set. And importantly, animation is set to all frames or whatever your frame range happens to be. I'm going to hit bake and then I'll get back to you when everything's done. And I'm back. The image sequence is rendered here and it looks like this. Now let's get this into a new shot. I'm going to start with this truck I grabbed off a of CG trader, which we're going to use as a reference. Let's set our duration to 30 frames to match our render. Bring in a new dome light and set the texture to our HDRI. We're going to use this for lighting only. We're going to check to make sure that the background is turned off. While we're here, we can also bump the exposure and name it dome light lighting. Then we're going to create a second dome light, name it dome light background, and under the details and turn off all illumination except transmission. For the texture, we're going to use our image sequence. Then under the animation tab, we're going to set it to simple and detect frames. Now we rotate our HDRI to fit, and by scrubbing through, we can be moving within our HDRI. Obviously, it's just a cheat and an image distortion, but sometimes you just need to move a little bit left or right inside your HDRI, and this is the technique you can use to do that. I've also brought this into After Effects using their 360 degree video tool for background for shots and composite. Let me know if you use this technique to make anything cool and definitely send it my way. Uh, yeah, that's it. Bye.